Okay, so we're out here at the uh, antenna mast, and as you can see, I've taken uh, a chunk of coax cable here and chopped it off and installed some lug connectors on it. And this is uh, what I've used to bypass the ballon transformer here. So what we're going to do is go inside and check with the Nano VNA to see if there's any difference. Victor Echo 6 Whiskey Golf Mic. Thank you. You are about 5.5 five into Alberta. Okay, so this is something I've never done before on the channel here, is to show you guys um, uh, a view of my computer screen here using Nano VNA software. This was a suggestion made by a viewer after I, uh, in the last video, I suggested that it might be a good idea to keep records of station parameters after they've been measured so that um, down the road, you're able to go and compare um, the uh, the measurements to see if there's any changes. So using the Nano VNA, it's great because you can develop a chart and go back and look at that chart. And what I've done in the past is just taken screenshots of the Nano VNA screen. But even better is to save the actual data plots so that you can recall them and examine them again on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead. I've I've connected my Nano VNA to the computer using a USB cable. And this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to do that. So if you're hoping to um, to, to do this, uh, there are lots of videos out there showing you how it's done. So I've connected to the Nano VNA. I'm going to go here. Uh, let's see, the sweep settings. Okay, so I'm going to use a single sweep. And I'm going to sweep the 80 meter band. Set band sweep. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to sweep. So here is what we see. All right, that's interesting. Three and a half to four megahertz. We should be seeing a sweep that comes through the, uh, yeah, something definitely wrong. All right, I'm going to do some troubleshooting and I will be right back. Okay, so you remember in the last video where I was explaining double checking the coaxial cable lead that comes from the Nano VNA, the ones that we use, they're um, quite small diameter coaxial cable and they're a little bit delicate. Well, I just had one go bad on me. So I've replaced that and now we're going to sweep again. Yeah, okay, so that's looking way better there. So let's go ahead and find that point where the antenna is resonance, which of course means that our reactance is zero. So I'm going to take and pop this chart out and we'll enlarge it here and find this spot. I think it's going to be one of these two data points here. As you can see, when we enlarge the chart, it's spread out. My The particular nano VNA that I have takes 101 data points and you can see that here. Uh, if you want better resolution on that, there's a way to do it using the Nano VNA software, and I'll show you in just a second. But first, let's go back and look at that point. So we are at 25 milliohms of reactants on that particular data point, which is almost nothing. And we're reading 65.6 ohms of uh, at the feed point of this antenna, and of course, without or with the... Um, with the Ballon Transformer bypassed, as I showed you at the beginning of this video. So 65.6 ohms. And in the last video, I'm just looking at my notes. With the Ballon installed, I was reading 65.5 ohms. Frequency of resonance was 3.809, and the standing wave ratio was 1.31. So what we're seeing here is 1.31, 3.805, and so there's virtually no difference. The antenna is mounted again, by the way, at the same height that it was for the first uh, test with the ballon installed at 36 feet. And there's virtually no difference in what I'm seeing here. But very interesting. Okay, so let's go and uh, see. I'll show you how to 
get a little bit re better resolution here. Take this segments setting and punch a 10 in there. And you're going to see, let's take a look here at one, um, each data point is taken at five kilohertz. If we increase that to 10, now we're 500 hertz per step. So let's go ahead and sweep that. And you're going to see that it takes a lot longer, but there is a lot more data there. Um, I guess one advantage to doing this is if there is some kind of a sharp um, characteristic in the curve that you can't see with the lower resolution, it might be between two data points, and you might not be able to see weird behaviors there. Um, if you increase that resolution, you're going to be able to see it, but for m most measurements, you're probably not going to be experiencing, at least on antennas anyways. So let's go back to our pop-out and go and look here at that zero point, which of course means we are at the frequency of resonance. And uh, let's see, so yeah, it's, it's actually kind of hard to find that spot. Let's try on the Smith chart. If we go ahead and make that really big and try and get it right on that line so 82 milliohms so yeah it's of course it's not making a lot of difference to the readings here you can see there's probably a way in nano vna saver to automatically determine where that lowest point or what the frequency of resonance is um I'm just looking down here. So the, the danger with this one here, of course, is that the minimum SWR doesn't always mean that you're on resonance, but uh, there's probably a way to do it. I'm learning as I go, and I'm sharing with that as I learn uh, on this learning journey that I'm on here as an amateur radio operator. And um, when I discover if there is a different way to do this so that we can quickly and efficiently locate that minimum point or find that frequency of resonance. I'll share it with you in a future video. Okay, so back to the um, discussion about saving a, uh, a sweep of um, either your antenna or your coax cable for future reference to um, keep records at your station so that you have something to compare to down the road to know if something is degrading like a coaxial cable or if there's a problem that's uh, developed it can help you to uh, compare before and after and to troubleshoot um, so here is the file section in nano vna saver and i'm going to you can see that i've gone and and reloaded nano vna saver software here so i haven't taken a sweep there's no data here so if you go and look at a sweep that i have saved previously so let's pick uh this three and a half to four this was with the ballon installed if we open that up now that is the sweep that we performed on that day so we can then go back in again and take a look at what we found that day. And you can see that all of the information is there. So this is really a, a great way to keep those records of your station. I'm probably gonna plan to sweep mine once a year just as a matter of maintenance to keep track of uh, any changes in the coaxial cable. So I'll know when it's time to replace my RG213 out to the antenna mast, or if I start to have any problems, it could help me um, you know, in the investigation. So here's something interesting I just discovered in my uh travels here with the nano vna and sweeping an antenna that's actually mounted up in the air um, of course this is an 80 meter antenna and if the propagation is right it doesn't take a lot for those signals to propagate great distances even at very um, weak levels of um, of signal going into the antenna so th take a look at this i've paused the sweep on the nano vna I'm sweeping the 80 meter band and I'm sweeping through the RG213 coax out through the 80 meter dipole that we were working on earlier. Now, let's just take a look at this here. In the nano VNA software, now I'm going to connect. There we go. 
I'm going to connect to the Nano VNA. And now I'm going to, I've got the sweep setting to single sweep. And I'm going to select the 80 meter band again. And now I'm going to take, first I'm going to, uh, so I've got a, an SDR receiver, an air spy hooked up to a loop antenna. And this is the software here, so I'm going to enable the speaker on it so we can hear what's going on. Now I'm going to take a sweep and watch what happens. I'm receiving this off of the air. I'm going to take another sweep. There it is, single sweep, and it stops. So this is the CW produced by the Nano VNA. It's just a single frequency spike here, and it's um, off to the side and parked there. So we are actually still transmitting a signal through the air. Now, if we go over to the Nano VNA, and we see that the screen has gone dim, which is a uh, a bug, I think. Uh, I've noticed it before. There we go. Turn the screen back up. All right. Now, if we go back to stimulus, now I've got the sweep paused here. I'm going to unpause the sweep. So if you're sitting plugged into an antenna with the Nano VNA running and it's set to just continually update, what's happening is you could potentially be transmitting a CW spike that sweeps through the entire 80 meter band continuously and um, if the propagation's there other operators could be picking you up and it might be um, a little bit of a nuisance I would say. So for myself I think what I'm going to do in the future is is I'll take my one sweep let it update and then pause the sweep so that we're not constantly scanning through the frequency range that we have set for the nano VNA to sweep. This way it's not going to just continuously um, be a nuisance on the air if the propagation is such that uh, the signals are carrying. So in the last video with the ballon installed at an antenna height of 36 feet we saw 65 and a half ohm feed point impedance. Frequency of resonance was 3.809 megahertz and the standing wave ratio was 1.31 to 1. And today without the ballon we saw a frequency and measured at uh, the height of the antenna mount was 36 feet. The frequency of resonance was 3.805. We saw 1.31 SWR and a feed point impedance of 65.6 ohms. So there is virtually no difference between the two. So if that's the case, why do we even need a ballon transformer? So I think in a future video, I'm going to try to cover that topic and we'll discuss what a ballon transformer does and why we need one. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for spending this time with me on my hobby bench. I just managed to log a contact on 17 meters in Slovenia, Sierra 58 November. Very cool. We'll see you guys next time.